yeah. Life wasn't on the beat. Oh. I, I can't fuck now, you got some hot beats. It's your boy Kanye to the Got consequences oh. here. I see now. Yeah. Little brother. I see I now. Yeah, I want y'all listen. Question. Oh. Now how the hell I end up arguing with this bitch? What up, real music? It's Music Dude coming at you from downtown Philadelphia at the mansion inside of the Brown Sugar Party. We're here for the inaugural installment of the Ninth Degree with Ninth Wonder. There's really no need to introduce Ninth. You know him from all his production work, Jay-Z, Buckshot, Murs, of course, Little Brother. So Ninth agreed to sit down with us and allow him to give him the Ninth Degree. What up, Ninth? How you doing? Trying to get up, man. I, I feel you. So. Tell, you know, the people at Real Music and, and the world really about True School and, and the whole movement and what it means and then especially, you know, what you're trying to do with the True School movement here tonight. Um, True School is, is something, um, a brainchild of mine that I adapted uh, from just thinking about, you know, how music reaches certain demographics, mm -hmm. so to speak. Um, it, seems, it seems like um, 70s Babies was all on one page when it came to to music at a certain point. And somewhere around 96, 97, man, it kind of lost its way, you know, uh, with the introduction of the internet, it made people with the jobs and, and families and kids and whatnot, kind of made people not really lazy to look for music, but the places they used to look for music, like on the radio and TV and things like that, what they used to hear is not there anymore. Mm -hmm. So there's a, there's a generation of people that feel like that nothing is out there for them. Um, especially um, dealing with, with black folk, either dealing with the Tom Jordan generation or the 106 and Park generation. There's right. no generation in between that plays what we grew up listening to, and that's being 70s babies. Mm -hmm. So that's what True School is. So that's, True that's School is, is more of an era as opposed to perhaps like a sound? It's, it's an era. It's, it's everything from, we, we start at uh, Africa Band Bada Soul Sonic Force playing at rock. We started like 1982. 1979, 1979, all the way, and we stopped at like 97. And and for most of us, why though? Why 97? Why? Because that's when the internet really got involved, and that's when the sound started to change. And, and for some people, that's when they felt like the soul was leaving hip hop music, or soul was losing, leaving music as a whole. Period. Mm -hmm. So um, that's why we kind of stopped at 97 because mm -hmm. probably, if you really think about it, a person who I don't know. A person who's 25 years old graduated from high school in 97, 25, 26. So that was kind of the cutoff. Right. Even Tom Joyner has a cutoff. Right. Even 106 and Parkers have a cutoff. Those gen those generations. Those right. Generations they have cutoff. So our cutoff is 80, 79 to 97. And it encompasses everything from MTV, when MTV first started, all the way to Video Soul, Video Vibrations. Caribbean Rhythms, Teen Summit, Yo TV any, Raps, Yo TV Raps, any cartoon, anything, all of that is Different World. Because I was I was looking at the website, right. it was Different World, the Spike Lee joints, and oh uh, man, any, anything days. from that time, anything from that time period. Is Breakfast, Club? Breakfast Club, Breakfast Club, Breakfast Club six, school? Sixteen Candles, um, Riley Ringwald, Sixteen Candles. Come on, even. man, Desperately Seeking Susan. Who's that? All of those movies, all mm -hmm. of those are our movies, and mm -hmm. and I think it's it's time for. You know, the way technology is set up now, we have a way that we can display our general generation. So that's what true school is. Oh, A lot of people come to the parties like this is what I've been, yeah, this man. is what I've been looking for. Like you're playing the mu you're playing all of my favorite songs. Right. Because I'm like, yeah, I'm playing all your favorite songs. Cause I grew up with you. What gets them? Like, like what, like what, what tracks get them? Like the By Suzanne Vega, mm -hmm. Cruise Summer by Banana Rama. I mean, all of those records that we 
Everybody wants to feel like everybody wants to reminisce. You know, the way the world is now, man, it's always good to like reminisce and take it back. There's nothing wrong. Everybody says, I don't want to live in the past. It's not about living in the past, man. It's not about that. You never, never lose your childhood because once you become too serious, it's like, dude, you don't have any fun. Do you branch out too? Like, do, can, do you do the camel walk? Do you do the bump? Do you, you do the, you, do you do the finger snap? No, I don't do that. You don't do that. <laughs> Last month um, on This Is Real Music, um, uh, one, one of the, the writers had an interesting idea about Lupe Fiasco and how that album sort of like bridged the gap between like Gen X and, and Gen Y that, you know, like bo both generations could kind of feel right. where he was coming from and it, and it compelled both generations. And, you know, what's also interesting is that you're a professor or right. a, 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 I'm a, a professor. I'm a busy, yeah, visiting lecturer, uh, artist in residence. Artist in residence right. at NC Central. So you're dealing with that younger I'm generation. With generation Y. What, like, so, like, what's, what's the curriculum? What are, you, what are you trying to do with that right there? The curriculum is on um, 73 to 97 hip hop. Oh, you're, t you're, teaching, you're teaching them about. Right, I'm what teaching them about the history, right. Oh, okay. um, Here's the crazy thing about it, and follow me on this one. Mm -hmm. Most 21-year-olds, 22-year-old kids, their parents are 49 and above. In most cases, in a typical American family, their family, their, their mom and dad is 49, 48 and older. Okay, so most kids in my class, if they didn't have an older brother, an older sister, an older cousin, an older somebody, if they are 22 and they're the oldest sibling in their family, their parents listen to everything from Curtis Blow on back. Follow me. From Curtis Blow on back. Previous. Like previous, okay. right. James because Brown. James Brown, Brown everybody. everybody. So when I asked the 22 year old, I said, I, you know, you know, in most the black communities, if I asked the 22 year old, how old your parents? 49. Your older sibling? Yes. You know Luther Vandross? Of course, my mom played. You know Earth, Wind & Fire? Of course, my mom played. You know Cameo? Of course, my mom played. That's 79. I said, you know Curtis Blow? Yeah, I know that song. Mm -hmm. You know, song. You know I know that mm -hmm. song. You know De La Soul? No. Because De La Soul came out in 89. Mm -hmm. That parent, who was 25 in 1984, now they probably got into the church and got more serious about life. De La Soul is not for them. De La Soul is for us. Right. You get it? Right. So, so if a 20-year-old kid has a 30-year-old brother, that's where they get that De La Soul from. Right. So that's the gap I'm figuring out. Like you know, I'm figuring it out. You know, it's for a 20-year-old kid, the gray area is 1986 to 96. That's gray area. Mm -hmm. And if you notice, if you ask the kid, you say. How old, what, what was your first rap record you ever bought? They say Flesh of My Flesh and Blood of My Blood by DMX. You know right. there's a gap. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. They know everything from 84 and back and 96 on up. That gray area between 94 and 86, 90, 84 and 96. It's blank to them because they, they they didn't hear it in the household, and that's what and that's what true school is seeking to promote. So it's not only that it's not only that you're trying to provide sort of like a forum or, or a platform or you know a gathering place for, for you know your generation, but you're also trying to gather others to recognize right. what is like a, a, a forgotten culture. Right, it was, it was the forgotten. Problem is nobody prepared themselves for when hip hop grew up. What do you do when the young generation's music grows up? Hip hop is a 33 year old art form. So what do you do when Curtis Blow at times was 22 years old? He's not 40. What do you do? Let me let, let me sort of like switch gears a little bit okay. and say again because I, I want to get some of your thoughts on just music in, in general and and also um, our February issue at, at This Is Real Music is dealing with it's almost like a commemoration of Dilla so we're, we're focusing on production as well and I want to get your thoughts on on, on that too. Okay, but um. So pr primarily, um, when we think about music in general, hip hop specifically, right? right. Um, you know, like the, this is where music brain, brain shows. We sort of like broke it down into like you know there being like three separate artists, and there's you know the, the type of artist that is out to save hip hop, and there's the other type of artist that is is more so um, trying to I, I guess use the status quo to get as much you know commercial success as possible, attain as much commercial success as possible. And then there's the other 
um, artist that is maybe looking at hip hop as, you know, possibly even a dead art form and sort of like distancing themselves from, from hop and um, diving like head first into other genres. Right. What are you? You have to save it? You are, you, are, are, you, are, you, are, you, are you trying to just meld into the status quo? Or are you saying, you know, I, think it's I can't past, hip hop right now? I think it's past hip hop, man. I'm it's trying to, it's past hip hop? I'm trying to say black music. Black, black music, music right what now. Do you, what do you all, mean by black music? Black music right now is at an all time low. Okay. When, when Steve Harvey said nobody's talking about love anymore in their records, mm-hmm. nobody's talking about this, that, and the third. 75% of all black music talks about destruction. In what way? Like, like if, if you hit, off the top of your head, I mean, you know, I'm on, I mean, and, and please, let's not, please understand that every part of hip hop needs to be shown. Every part of, even Superfly, Curtis Mayfield's record, Superfly, which was a soul record, was a record about pencil mm-hmm. Right? So every part of the game needs to be shown. But in a, point, in a poignant way, though. Right. On, on, in a way that everybody can get it. Right. Radio. Right. So, but as a whole, black music is at an all-time low. Just imagine, in 30 years, somebody's, somebody, a 14-year-old right now, in 40 years, she's going to be singing Laffy Taffy to her kids. <laughs> Does that I, not I, scare you? It kind of, but it kind of made it, it kind of made me chuckle. But then, like, I, I felt myself, and I'm like, yeah, it's like, whoa, kind of, that's right? Because you were saying you're out to save black like, music, so I, I guess the, I will say, save, I'm out to preserve. And the vehicle for preserving black music, I guess, is, is once again getting back to the whole true school. Right, getting back to the whole true school point. Like, people get into their jobs, people go to school, people get you know get you know degrees and whatnot and all of that, but and they like to say. I don't listen to rap music anymore, right? You know, I've heard people say, I, I don't listen, I don't listen to rap. I know. Yeah, you don't listen to rap now. You don't listen to rap on 106 and Park. And I understand you. But you're not gonna convince me of if you don't like push it by salt and pepper anymore. That's what you're not gonna convince me of. You ain't gonna convince me of that. You're not gonna convince me of children's story. You're not gonna convince me of uh my mic sounds nice. That's timeless. These are these are timeless references. Exactly. And for some people, they need to be reintroduced to that again. A lot of people come to our parties and say, man, you play records. I ain't heard since I left college. Mm-hmm. And that's a shame, man. You know what I'm saying? That's a shame. And that's why it goes back to Tom Jordan. That's why they have a cruise where they have fun every year. And they play the same records. So we need to choose. So Night Wonder needs to, needs to pop off with your school. We need to, yeah, we need a cruise. Like, it's coming for us, man. It's really. And you think Tom Jordan doesn't know that? You think he doesn't know that? I have 30 year olds now that come that comes on my cruises and they're picking the lesser two evils. They don't want to listen to Young Station. So they have to listen to me. But I gotta give them something. So if you go on the Tom Jordan cruise site this year they have BBD on the cruise. Right, right. See what I'm saying? He knows his demographic is getting. Okay, I gotta go at least up to 90. Okay, I go at least up to 91. I gotta go up to 92 now. Next, in about three years, he was like, man, I gotta go up to 94. I ain't got no choice because all of those people that's now 27 is going to be 30 years old. So I got to play music that they know. So that's why Tom Jordan had SWV on a sky show. That's ours, man. That's, that's a true school. That's ours. Exactly. Let me ask you about production. Okay. Is there a difference between a producer back in the Molly Ball days, the Prince Paul days, and a producer of the Ninth Wonder, Kanye West days? It's not. Um, it's not that big of a producer. The one thing I can say about producers, we all have respect for each other. When when Mary J. Blige shouted me out on um, the on, on the AMAs and billboards, I got like 50 calls from producers. 50. Oh man, Mary J. shouted you out. Do you know? Scram Jones, uh, uh, Just Blaze, uh, Pete Rock, Premier, DJ Toon. All across the board, we have a, just a mutual respect for each other. What we don't respect is biters. Like, get your own lane. Be, influ- be influenced by somebody, but have your own lane. And most producers, more than rappers, know their predecessors. We, we know we know our Pete Rocks. We know our Molly Malls. We know all that. So, that's a good second to, the, to another question I have. is: Do you feel there's a difference between a beat maker and a producer? Yeah, a beat maker is just... Kanye West is a producer. Right. 
Kanye can take a beat. If you hear it on your own, you might say, ah, oh, the, the beat's not all that. But he turns it into a song. Because he's in the studio with the artist. Right, right, right. He's, you know, he's, he's creative process. Like, he, he understands the creative process. Um, Dr. Dre is, Dr. Dre is the best producer ever. Producer, because he's put, he put together Doggy Style, The Chronic, 2001, DOC, The Game, The Documentary. We can go on. Like, he, Eminem, first record. Dr. Dre is responsible of, if you name the top 10 biggest, I'm not talking about best, biggest and most, what he's tripping downstairs. The biggest, <laughs> he is, the biggest, um, the biggest rappers that the world knows, Dre is responsible for three of them, Snoop, Eminem, and 50 Cent. In the history of rap music, and he, he knows how to form an artist, he knows how to mold an artist, he knows how to take, he know how to make you listen to track one, the track 16 without saying. For you personally, like, you know, who, who are somebody right now? Well, I mean, you can go back and, and talk about influences too, but also right now, like, who are some of the producers that compel you? Not just people that you like, but people that, like, that push. Like, that push me when I hear something, I say, ah, oh, damn. Inspire, inspire you. You know what I mean? Um, Knotts from, um, Knotts from Virginia, Pharrell, mm -hmm. Kanye, um, uh, Just Blaze. Just Blaze just Blaze for Sweet Just as nasty. Oh, what you man. think about that? Show me what you got, oh, Travis. He did the drums on that. Yeah, sure. No, he, somebody else played the drum. Live drums. He did, else. he did play the drums. Uh -huh. Okay. Mm -hmm. um, but another thing is to get to understand you need live drums on that. Mm -hmm. That's just 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 call to do that. Mm -hmm. Dr. Dre, of course. Scott Storch. I like Scott Storch. Mm -hmm. um, that's a lot of producers, man. It's Cat Name for 10. Got that ill mind just joined G Unit. Um, um, Jake won out on the West Coast. I mean, it's just a lot of people in the credits in the line of those. Rodney Jerkins, Brian Michael Cox, um, Raphael Sadiq. Sadiq like, is now. People, he's they, they I mean, it's, so it's, it's, it's a lot of producers, man, that's out there that you really have to read the credits, man, that, that really drives today's music. With February being, you know, just last year in February, Dilla died. Just like what are your what are your thoughts on, on what he did, or how he impacted music, you know, maybe you know some some of the ways that that, that he impacted you, inspired you, if he did at all. Still a follower of the deal, so mm -hmm. like <laughs> like he fathered it. He fathered it. Mm -hmm. I don't think he fathered fathered it to the point where you get the you know snapping it, burning incense. I don't think he fathered it that long. Right. That became the marketing power, right. the sound and the feeling of the music. Dilla followed that movie, and, and, and it's a sad, the way music is set up, it's sad to know that his own, a lot of his own people don't even know who he is, and, and it's just sad, man, it's sad, and I never got, I never got one time to meet him, but I felt he was so connected, I got a picture of him holding and listening, a cover and point to it like that from somebody, but um, the, the music that he made was so beautiful, man, and like I said, man, our people, some of our people will never get to hear that man's music. Because it's not put in places that they will go look. If they if Dylan was in, if Dylan did an interview in Essence, maybe. But him in Fatal Magazine and Elemental, like, you got to go way in the back of Borders and look at that book, man. You know what I'm saying? So it's sad. Right, and it's sad. It's sad. It's like that. So we got we got all Philly coming out here tonight. We got people coming from D.C. and Virginia, Jersey. What, like, what are they? What are they? What are they gonna hear? <laughs> Turn up 
on a song that, like I said, you got your first kiss off of, song you went to the prom off of, song that, you know, whatever, your homie might have died, that was a song that was, I mean, anything, man, just stuff that's ours. Oh, Come on, ladies, we riding right now. I got the DJ in check. Touch me, tease me, gonna hit the radio. I mean, I'm not the only one. I know that. So, being the fact that I'm in music and I have the time, music is my profession. I want to give it to the people. I want to give it to my people, and that's true school. People. So we appreciate the time. No man. doubt, though. Nice one, the true school. This is real music. Bass. We go with Serrat. It's like this is real music. Stop.